Hello, everyone. I want to welcome you to our Long Beach Product Exposé. Um, today, we're going to be talking about um, awesome topics that would enlighten you on how your heart works. And we're going to be talking about challenges that you face when you have um, health issues such as cardiac arrest and heart attack. So I want you to join me as we move through today's topic we're going to be very, very fast with it. We're going to be very, very fast with it. Okay. As you know, my name is Dorcas Ajikugen. I'm a business and a wellness coach with Longridge Bioscience. And um, I'm going to be taking you on a journey on how you can leverage on the Longridge platform. Okay. You can leverage using Longridge products in giving your life, you know, a beautiful and a healthy lifestyle. Right. Okay. So, uh, before we proceed, you need to know that Longridge is highly invested in research and development. Longridge has 10 research and development centers across the globe. And we're talking about research and development centers in the United States of America, in France, in Switzerland, in Italy, in China, and in Japan, okay? So these development centers are spread across these countries I've mentioned. And trust me, the products are changing lives and giving people, you know, the opportunity of enjoying a beautiful and a healthy lifestyle. So if you wanna be beautiful, as I always say, Language platform is the place to be. Now, language has language about science has over two thousand quality products. We cannot forget they also run the OEM and the ODM, you know, um, partnership with um, companies. Now, I have seven categories of products that I'll be sharing with you. Okay, all manufactured by language bioscience. Now, in these categories, we have language products catering for the needs of, you know of um of different sections right we have nutritional drinks and smoothies we have nutritional supplements we have personal care products we have baby care products male health care products female care products energy health care products that you can utilize in giving yourself you know um a healthy lifestyle right now moving on to what we have today long um our product expose will be centered on cardiac arrest and heart attack. Don't forget that we've, we started, you know, talking about the heart as an organ. Today, we're talking about the challenges that the heart can face. And two challenges we're gonna talk about, one is, the, is cardiac arrest and the other is heart attack. Now, let's do a quick recap on what we talked about the last time, right? The human heart, okay? So what's the human heart, right? The human heart is like a big pump, right? Okay, made up of muscles that constantly pump blood throughout the body. Every minute of the day, every second of the day, the heart is working, okay? Now, we know that the heart is the body's core muscle, and it's the first organ that is formed after conce conception. So when a woman gets pregnant, the first organ that is formed in the body of the baby is the heart, okay? And that's why that's when you hear that the lady will say, oh, we had we, we we went for you know a scan and we got the heartbeat you know got the heartbeat afterwards I, I listened to the heartbeat i know that's one of the most beautiful moments in a mother's life right yeah now the heart is about the size of a fist okay my fist might be a little bit small okay but it's you know the size of a fist right and it's located at the middle of the chest okay middle of the chest between your two lungs that's where it's located and it's protected by your ribs so it's not just dangling there it has protection right now the heart has four chambers okay the left and the right atrium and the left and the right ventricles okay now these are um these help to ensure that the blood goes in and out in an orderly manner blood does not have this reverse mechanism you know everything is orderly as a result of this chamber okay now the blood um when the blood leaves the heart it takes a journey through the arteries okay the aorta and the pulmonary artery make sure that our blood gets to the right place at the right time okay so everything is properly calculated when it has to do with the heart the heart is precise in its functioning okay now when um when blood needs to go back to the heart it's carried through veins okay so if you look at your wrist you would see veins okay for those of us that are you know the african descent ours looks look a little bit green like right 
lots of people, the whites will always say it's blue in color from the outside. Okay, but we will, our own, mine looks greenish, okay? So when you see that, that's your vein, right? Okay, now blood that comes from the lungs into the left atrium is transported nicely, okay, through the preliminary veins, while blood that comes from around the body goes flowing in through the superior and vena cava, okay? And the inferior vena cava, this carries that from the lower body part, right? Now, the blood contained in an adult is around 10% of that adult's weight. And um, in our last training, I told you that you carry around about five liters of blood everywhere you go, right? Yeah. So this is um, a pictorial view of the heart, okay? So uh, most times I see people touching the left side, of, you know, saying, oh, you know, or the right side, it's in the middle, okay? But just that the if you look at the left ventricle, sorry, when you look at the left ventricle here, you see that it's tilting towards the you know um, the left. That's why a lot of people say, oh, it's at the left hand side. It's at the middle, but just tilting towards the left. Now moving on, moving on, um, we're going to talk about the heartbeat. Okay, we're going to talk about the heartbeat. Now. If you put your ears close to the chest of a particular person, you're going to hear um, this lub dub sound, lub dub, lub dub, okay? And it's made as a result of the heart valves, okay? When they open and they close, you hear that sound. Now, with each heart beat, okay, blood pushes through the um, aortic um, valve into the aorta and it is delivered to the body. And the heart beats about 100,000 times a day. Whoa, right? And in case and in case you want to notice what's going on in your heart, you can feel your pulse. Okay, there's this rhythmic um, beating of the heart each time the ventricle contracts by touching your index finger, your middle finger, okay, to your wrist. When you touch it to your wrist or the side of your neck, okay, you should be able to feel that the heart rate. Okay, feel your pulse there. And if you if you want to determine it. You, you stay there for 10 seconds, count, then multiply what your count gave you by six. You should be able to have, you know, an analysis of how your heartbeat is, okay? Now, um, a six month old baby's heartbeat is like 100 beats per minute, right? While that of a toddler is about 70 to 80. And for an adult, we have around 60 to 80. Females have their heartbeats faster than meals okay so you can have a guy having his heartbeat around 70 while your ladies only be around 75 to 80 right okay so um um your your heart weighs about 300 to 450 grams okay and um you know it's just sitting pretty in there working with your circulatory system to ensure that you are healthy and comfortable so how does it work I, I gave i gave an analogy earlier on each heartbeat, you know, leads to the pumping of blood, okay? Through the cardiovascular system, the circulatory system, you know, does its stuff. Oxygen and nutrients are added to um, the blood system and it's delivered to the tissues. When you inhale carbon, the carbon dioxide and everything within is released through the lungs. And, you know, the bypro other byproducts or waste products are sent through the kidneys out of your body. Now on the screen, I have a pictorial view of the circulatory system, okay? And you can see um, the, um, the lungs, you can see the positioning of the heart in between, right? You can see the lungs, right? Left and right, you can see them there. Okay, you can see the lungs, right? You can see your heart in the middle, right? And you can see the arteries, the network of arteries and veins, you know? that are, you know, working hand in hand to ensure that blood supply is taken around the body. So you can see that it's a very, very strong network doing its job, ensuring that oxygen, nutrients, and blood supply gets to the necessary location. And don't forget that when the, the organs don't get, and body tissues, when they don't get enough blood supply, the body could malfunction. And this could lead, sorry, to a whole lot of challenges. Now, what are the blood vessels of the heart? Now, we have several blood vessels. We have the coronary um, arteries, okay? So like any other organ or tissue, the heart needs oxygen, as I said earlier on, and the coronary arteries, they sit on the surface of the heart and supply 
the heart muscles with what? Blood and oxygen. So if you look at my screen, you can see the left coronary artery here, right? You can see, right? Okay, now that's it, right? Good. You can see the right coronary artery here, right? So that's what it looks. Now these arteries, these coronary arteries, their job is to feed the heart itself with blood. Okay, so they are responsible for the heart. In a, they are responding and ensuring that the heart gets blood supply and with uh, laced with oxygen and nutrients every second. That's their job, right? Now the next um, vessel is called the aorta. The aorta, you can see the aorta here. It's this big, you know, pipe here. Huh? Okay, and it's, it's known as the largest artery in the body. Oxygen rich blood is pumped into the aorta, okay, from the left ventricle, okay, from the left ventricle. It's pumped in there to ensure that, um, you know, it delivers blood around the body. So from the aorta, blood gets to other parts of the body. Now, moving on, we have the pulmonary um, arteries, okay, the pulmonary arteries. The pulmonary arteries, they, um, they um, carry blood low in oxygen, okay? Okay, the one that's pumped by the right vein, it, it moves it into the pulmonary arteries that link to the lungs, okay? Now, when they move it to the lungs, you need, you need, you need, you need to come back. Okay, so um, the pulmonary veins, they return oxygen rich blood from the lungs. Don't forget that the lung is just, you know, around the corner as um, oxygen rich, as in oxy, um, as oxygen is released into the blood. These veins take the oxygen rich blood from the lungs to the left atrium of the heart and, you know, spread it across. Okay, so you can see the left atrium here. Yeah, this is it. Just follow my cursor and see the left atrium here, right? Yeah, so um, you can see the pulmonary veins, okay? You move in here, drop it here, right? You can see the in the um, the 3D version of it, you can see the pulmonary trunk here, right? So that's how it moves. Now we have the vena, um, the vena cava, okay? So blood low in oxygen is delivered to the right atrium. You can see the right atrium here in blue, okay? Yeah, you can see that, right? Good, okay? by two veins, okay? We have the superior vena cava, which is up here. Follow my cursor here, superior vena cava, okay? So blood low in oxygen comes in here from the superior. Then from the inferior, you can see it at the bottom here, right? Yes, down to the right atrium, okay? Okay, so that's how it is from the top of the body and from the bottom of the body. Superior takes care of the top, the, the um, inferior takes care of the bottom, okay? And you know, it takes it, it supplies it that way, and you know, it the process continues for it to get oxygenated for constant flow. Now moving on, moving on, what I just explained now, this is it in a bigger you know view, right? So you can imagine you can see the lungs up here doing their job. They have we have to separate the lungs from the heart so that you can see how these chambers are working, right? So you have the pulmonary artery here, you have the pulmonary vein here, okay? Now, if you look at the key to this particular diagram, now vessels transporting oxygenated blood are in red. So from this point, everything in red here is carrying oxygenated blood, right? Now the vessels transporting and transporting deoxygenated blood, you're here, okay? Oxygen that has supplied, I'm sorry, blood that has supplied its oxygen to other parts of the body, at this one, right? Yeah, here. Right now, vessels involved in gas exchange are the ones in, in purple here. You can see them here, right? So as all these things are happening, as oxygen is being exchanged, you know, through the blood, our body functions well, okay? Our body functions well. Now, the, I'm gonna be emphasizing on the pulmonary artery among the blood vessels because I'm taking us somewhere. Because when we understand the function of the pulmonary, um, the pulmonary the pulmonary, the pulmonary arteries, sorry, we would have a better view of what we're going to talk about moving forward. Now, the pulmonary, um, pulmonary means in the lungs. So what you're seeing here is in the lungs, as in whatever is handling 
stuff coming from the lungs, okay? So those arteries are blood vessels that carry blood from the heart to the lungs. So when the pumping action, when oxygen has been delivered around, it has to go back there to get fresh um, ox uh, oxygenated blood to deliver to the heart and to other parts of the body, okay? Now, this trunk, you can see the trunk here, okay? This trunk here on both sides, is a short and stout structure that's about five centimeters in length, three centimeters in, di um, in dimension, okay? Now, the left and the right um, pulmonary arteries act to deliver the oxygenated blood to its respective lungs. So they supply the respective lungs for oxygenation. Now, while veins usually carry the oxygenated blood from tissues back to the heart, in this case, pulmonary um, veins are among the few veins that carry oxygenated blood. So normally veins don't carry oxygenated blood, but these pulmonary um, um, veins have a special function to carry oxygenated blood. So oxygenated blood from the lung is circulated back to the heart through the pulmonary veins that drain into the left atrium, okay? And once blood is pumped from the left atrium through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, this oxygenated, oxygenated blood will then be pumped from the left ventricle through the, um, the aortic valve to the rest of the body's organs and tissues through the aorta. Now you're gonna understand what I'm talking about as we move forward. So don't worry, okay? Don't get confused. Just follow me, right? Now, why are the coronary arteries important? Now these are coronary arteries, the arteries that feed the heart itself, okay? Now we need to know their importance because if we don't understand their importance, we will not understand where problem comes from. Now, since coronary arteries deliver blood to the heart muscles, any coronary artery disorder or disease can have serious implication. Can you see it? By reducing the flow of oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscle. So these tiny ones I showed us earlier, on, you can see them here, right? These are the coronary art arteries, okay? The coronary arteries, you can see them, the network that supply the heart itself. Now, if there's any complication to this tiny artery you're seeing placed on top of the heart, problem starts. Now, this can lead to a heart attack and possibly death. Okay, atherosclerosis, a buildup of, of plaque in the inner line of the artery causing it to narrow or become blocked is the most common cause of heart disease. So if these arteries, you know, thin out or have plaque building up on the inside of them and they become narrow and blood is not able to flow properly, what happens? A heart attack could take place. So let's move on. Let's move on, it's getting interesting. So what is, a, what is this concept of a heart attack? If, what is it when we say a person has, an, um, has a heart attack, right? That's where we're going. Now, a heart attack or myocardial infraction of course, when the flow of blood to the heart is blocked. So when those tiny you know, arteries I just showed you, when there's a blockage, it's just like a pipe that is supposed to deliver water through your plumbing system to your house. Now, when it gets blocked, what happens? Water will not come to your house. Water will not come upstairs if you live upstairs. Can you see water is not gonna come from the borehole to your house if the pipe is blocked? Okay, and when your pipe is blocked, when it has to do with your, with your heart, a heart attack takes place. Now, the blockage is most often built up of fat. Now, please take note. What are the things that, you know, clog this pipe now? Fat, cholesterol, and other substances, which form a plaque in the arteries that feed the heart. Now, we're talking about the coronary arteries now. Okay, now, during a heart attack, a plaque can rupture and spill cholesterol and other substances into the bloodstream. Now, when they spill this thing into the bloodstream, a blood, um, a blood clot forms at the site of the rupture. If the blood clot is large, it can block blood flow through the coronary artery, starving the heart of oxygen and nutrients. Now, this is where problem comes. Now, the interrupted blood flow can damage or destroy part of the heart muscles. In other words, the muscles around that particular part can also get damaged when this rupture takes place. Now, this may lead to complete or partial blockage of the coronary artery. Now, if the blocked artery is not reopened quickly as a result of intervention by doctors, the portion of the heart normally nourished by that artery will begin to die. 
And another cause of, aside that, another cause of heart attack is also what we call spasm, okay? Spasm of the coronary artery. And you know what spasm is, right? That those jerking of muscles, right? Yeah. Now, if this spasm takes place on the coronary artery, it can shut down blood flow to that part of the heart muscle, okay? Now, this results, especially when you use tobacco, illicit drugs, such as cocaine, that can cause life-threatening spasm. We know that they cause spasm. So if you, if anybody that does those kind of things can actually have this kind of cause for heart attack, okay? Now, the longer a person goes without treatment, so when these things happen, the longer that person goes without treatment, the greater the damage. And now, symptoms of a heart attack may be immediate or intense, okay? More often, symptoms start slowly and persist for hours, days, weeks. Okay, so you, the signs, of, your body begins to give you signs when this happens. You start feeling, you know, in a certain way. And sometimes it could take days, hours, you know, weeks before the heart attack takes place. Okay, now the heart usually does not stop beating during a heart attack. So if a person is having a heart attack, the heart is not going to stop beating. Okay, a heart attack is quite serious and sometimes it's very fatal. Okay, if there isn't intervention. Now, everything I just said is wrapped up in this picture. Now, you can see these tiny arteries here, right? These are the ones we're talking about, right? Now, this is a, a magnified view of what's going on. Now, when these plaques, the fats, the cholesterol, the, all those many things take place, look at what it's doing. As it keeps building up in that artery, it begins to narrow it up and prevent the flow. You can see how wide it is here. You can see how wide it is here, but here it's narrowing. Now, what are you observing at this particular point? Blood cells are beginning to what? To clump on each other, no space for it to flow properly. Now, it is this thing that causes delay in supply of blood to where it ought to go. This delay is what causes the problem. Now, if this thing constricts further, it could close up that particular stuff and problem you know, comes, heart attack comes. Now, what are the common heart attack warnings or signs? It's important that you know them, okay? Now, let's start with the diagram here. So it starts with pain or discomfort in the chest, right? So the moment you start feeling pain and discomfort in your chest, it's a warning sign, right? Now, when you start feeling um, this kind of lightheadedness, start feeling nausea, you feel like throwing up or you feel like vomiting, you're lightheaded, you feel like vomiting, you need to take caution, right? Now, when you're feeling that your jaw, your neck, and your back is in pain, something is going on. Your upper body comes next. When you now start feeling this squeezing fullness of pain, it's just crushing you. It's an indicator that something is wrong, okay? When your arms and your shoulder, your upper body, when it starts, you know, having the same thing, when your stomach, your jaw, back, you know, every shoulder, everything is just giving you problems. It's time for you to, you know, take caution. Then the next thing is when you start breaking into cold sweat and you're not breathing properly, heart attack might just, you know, be at the corner. Now, what are the symptoms of a heart attack? I just gave you the warning signs, right? Now, some heart attacks strike suddenly, but many people have warning signs. Those signs I just mentioned, okay? And symptoms as days or weeks in advance. So the earliest warnings might be recurrent chest pain or pressure that is triggered by activity and relief when you rest. So if you're that kind of person, you notice that you're feeling that squeezing sensation when you walk, and when you take out time to sit down and rest, you don't feel it you should go for checkup, you should go for a checkup, okay? Because um, it might just be something brewing and a time might come that you might not, you know, have that luxury to rest before trouble comes. So it's important that you go for a checkup. Now, common heart attack signs and symptoms include pressure, tightness of the chest, pain, squeezing or aching sensation in the chest or arms that spread to the neck, to the jaw or to the back. Okay, now in most times, nausea, indigestion, heartburn, and abdominal pain could also flow. Shortness of breath could also take place. Breaking out in cold sweat, fatigue, tiredness. You can't explain why you're tired. You're walking up the stairs and you are so tired. You are like walking on the street and you are so tired, you feel like you can't take it anymore. Okay, then dizziness, 
sudden dizziness when you start feeling that you can't even you know keep your eyelids open heart attack might be around the corner okay so what are the things that expose us to you know this particular condition what are the risk factors that we should take note of and ensure that we prevent so that we don't fall into trouble right now certain factors can contribute to the unwanted buildup. now fatty deposits Okay, they narrow the arteries. I said that earlier on. So there are, there are major indicators that you need to look out for. When your fatty buildup is getting high, you need to take caution. Now, we have other risk factors as age. Now, men at age 45 or women at age 55 are more likely to have heart attack than younger women and men. Okay, now people that take tobacco, that smoke tobacco or have long time. Um, long-term exposure to um, tobacco, okay, have okay. So to, as I said earlier on, tobacco and cold um, and long-term exposure to secondhand smoke, you know, can actually um, be a very strong risk factor. So if you're in a place where the um, smoke build up probably they just use smoking all these all manner of stuff and you keep inhaling it over and over again you could actually end up having the symptoms of the people that actually smoke okay so it's important that you you know ensure that you are not in that kind of atmosphere right now high blood pressure over time high blood pressure can damage arteries and lead to heart um, issues okay high blood pressure that occur with other conditions such as obesity high cholesterol buildup diabetes these three increase your risk you know of ending up with a heart attack okay and um, high blood cholesterol and um, um build up okay with bad cholesterol when you have bad cholesterol buildup it can narrow your arteries so and we tell people that it's important that you take in foods and um, products that have high density lipoproteins um, um yeah that's the good cholesterol i mean those ones help to lower your risk because good cholesterol has a way of clearing out bad cholesterol high density lipoproteins have a way of cleaning out low density lipoproteins okay we're, we're, we're still going to talk about that moving forward right so um obesity is also one risk factor that should be avoided at all costs now when um obesity is linked with linked with um, high blood pressure and diabetes it is very very it, it keeps it keeps you at a danger point okay and it's important that at this point you need to lose weight so that you can save yourself the risk of you know, ending up with that. Diabetes is also a risk factor. Metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome occurs when a person has obesity, high blood pressure, and high blood sugar. Okay, so when these three conditions come together, you have what we call the metabolic syndrome, and it can help, it can make a particular person develop heart disease. Okay, now when a person has family history of heart attacks, have an uncle and aunt, parents, brothers and sisters, that have or grandparents that have that had early heart attack, that's an increased risk. You need to take caution. Now, the stress, lack of physical activities, illicit drug use, history of preeclampsia and autoimmune conditions, all these you know expose a person to heart attack. Now, I'm not saying that um, a person without these risk factors cannot still end up having this, okay? We have people that don't have these risk factors and they still end up having heart attack, okay? Probably as a result of not managing their stress levels and all that. Don't forget stress is mentioned here. I tell people that stress is one bad guy that is not always diagnosed when challenges come. The other, as in it's so bad that, you know, it causes a lot of damage without people knowing that it's the, it's the culprit. Right? So it's important that we take note of that. Now, moving on, I would like to just open our minds to the heart's electrical system. Now, we talked about the plumbing system earlier on. Now, you need to know that the heart has its own electrical system. In the heart's electrical system, certain things work hand in hand with the plumbing system to ensure that there is proper circulation. If you're talking about your, in your house, 
for water to get into your house, what happens? You need electricity to pump water from the borehole that sends water into your building, right? The same thing when it comes to your heart. Now, in order for the, plump, the pumping you know, action of the heart to take place, we need electrical signals working within the heart to you know, send those impulses that will help the heart beat and also to move blood from the filling chambers to the pumping chambers and to the lungs and to the body and back. So it's more like back and forth movement to different places as a result of impulses. Now the heart's pumping action is regulated by an electrical con and conduction system that coordinates the, con and the contraction of various chambers of the heart as I explained earlier on, right? Now this system controls the timing of the heartbeats by regulation. The heart rate, which is the number of times your heart beats per minute. So this electrical system is in charge of your heart rate. So the number of time your heart beats per minute is controlled by this electrical system. Then the heart rhythm, okay? The pumping action, the way the, the loop -loop, you know, sound it makes, right? That rhythm, that constant rhythm is also, you know, handled by this system. If you, when the heart has problems, you find out that there's this disorientation when it comes to its beats. But when the heart is in a normal situation, it is very orderly. Love the, love the, love the, love the, love the, and that's how it goes. Not love the, love, 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 nah. Okay? So when you have, you have the heartbeat going, you know, in a haphazard way, then there's problem, right? Now the heart's electrical system maintains a steady heart rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute at rest. And it also increases its rates to meet the body's needs during physical activity and lowers it during sleep time, okay? Now the orderliness within is handled by the electrical system, right? Now, when this electrical pathway is disturbed, now this is where I am, right? Sorry, this is where I am, okay? When the electrical pathway is disturbed, impulses can what misfire or travel the wrong route. Your heart can be too fast, okay? That's the tachycardia or too slow bradycardia or quiver fibrillation, okay? So bradycardia makes you feel dizzy and lightheaded, okay? When it's too slow. And tachycardia causes symptoms such as palpations and um, fatigue when it's too um, yes, when it's too um, fast, right? So more importantly, it's important that you keep your heart beating at a normal level. Now, this is the electrical system of the heart. You can see these nodes here, right? These nodes communicate with each other and transmit, you know, impulses that control, you know, the movement of blood and oxygen, you know, around the heart and outside the body, okay? Now, cardiac arrest. It's time for us to look at cardiac arrest because you see most times most people you know mix cardiac arrest and heart attack you know together they are two different phenomena and it's important that we understand how they are cardiac arrest is not the same thing as heart attack okay as i said earlier on um heart attack has to do with plumbing flow of blood right so cardiac arrest is, is triggered by an electrical malfunctioning in the heart that causes an irregular heartbeat. Can you see it, right? Now, when its pumping action is disrupted, the heart cannot pump blood to the brain, lungs, and other organs. Seconds later, a person loses consciousness and has no pulse. Death occurs within minutes if the victim does not receive treatment. So when it comes to heart attack, we're talking about someone okay, feeling dizzy and all this, but when it comes to cardiac arrest, the moment that the electric impulse is not moving at the way at the pace it ought to move or it has lost the signal what happens the person could actually end up losing you know consciousness because everything begins to shut down it's just like the way your generator goes off what happens everywhere in the house light goes out everything begins to you know shut down and that's why the person will lose consciousness okay so it is up it is um so cardiac arrest is actually abrupt loss of heart function in a person who may or may not have been diagnosed with heart disease. So it's something that just happens. You have heart disease or mm, you don't have heart disease. Or if that electrical impulse is not in place, you could lose consciousness, okay? It can come on suddenly or in the wake of other symptoms. In other words, you could just be fine and you could have health challenges. 
while it comes up. So a person that, and that's why you have people, ah, the guy was just okay in the office. So all of a sudden, the guy just fell down. He slumped. And we couldn't feel his pulse anymore. Cases like that, that's cardiac arrest. Do we understand? Please, if you understand it, give me a four in the chat. I need a four in the chat if you get what I'm saying. Because I know it's a little bit complicated. I know it's like going back to school, but it's important that we understand this so that when certain things happen around us, we know how to intervene. When certain cases happen, we know what to do and when to act. Because in cases like this, this is not the time to stand and watch. Because see, this person could end up dying. I was talking about a general shutdown of a body system when it comes to cardiac arrest. It's not a joke. Now, moving on, when the heart's electrical system malfunctions, the heart stop beating properly. The heart's pumping function is arrested or what? Stopped. Now, don't forget that the, the pumping system helps to take blood to the organs of the body to ensure that they have oxygen and what? Nutrients. Now, when the body is starved of oxygen and nutrients, your brain cells will begin to die. Yes. Brain cells immediately begin to die. Heart cells will be begin to die. So you can see that interventions have to be taken quickly because death can result quickly. As in, this is like quick death if actions are not taken properly. Now, cardiac arrest may be reversed if CPR, okay, cardiopulmonary resuscitation is performed, okay, or a defibrillator shock, okay, is given to the heart to restore a normal heart rhythm within a few minutes. Now, cardiac arrest may be caused by irregular heart rhythms called arrhythmias. A common um, arrhythmias associated with cardiac arrest is ventricular fibrillation, okay? Now, the heart's lower chamber suddenly starts beating chaotically and don't pump blood. That's what happens when it comes to ventricular fibrillation, okay? So, but in general, Let's not break it down so that we don't get confused. In general, cardiac arrest happens when the heart rhythm or the heart does not get the proper signal, electric signal that ought to tell the plumbing system to pump blood. Now, this is a picture of a normal body system functioning well here. And you know, body system is having cardiac arrest. Now you can see the brain, right? Looking fresh and all. You can see the supply to the brain here. You can see the artery that is you know, doing supplies to the brain. Now flow of oxygenated blood from lungs into the heart, into heart and then to the brain represented by the red arrows. So you can see the red arrows, right? From the heart. You can see from this point, like this travels to the brain, right? Good. Now look at the lungs, okay? The lungs will release there and it will move. You can see the heart here, getting its own supply and all that. Now, cardiac arrest happens when, when um, there's failure of the heart to contract, causing an abrupt cessation of normal circulation of blood. Now, the moment there's decrease in blood supply, what happens? The brain cells begin to die. Can you see it? Brain injury due to low blood flow will take place. Can you see it? And it's th that fast. It is that fast. Now, moving on, we're gonna, I now want us to link up cardiac arrest and um, heart attack, okay? Now, cardiac arrest is an electrical problem. So when you don't have light in your house, okay? That's cardiac arrest. When power supply is interrupted and everything goes dark, your refrigerator stops working, your um, fan stops working, your AC stops working, you, everything in the house stops working, that's cardiac arrest. When it's hard, hard, it's hard attack when the, you have plumbing problems, when water is not coming into your house, when water is not flowing into your toilet, your bathroom, your kitchen, then that's a plumbing problem, right? And that's hard attack. So every time you want to distinguish them, just tell yourself cardiac arrest, electric, electricity problem, heart attack, plumbing problem, right? Water is not coming in. That's a very quick indicator. Now, these two, in, um, these two distinct um, conditions are linked, okay? Now, sudden cardiac arrest can occur after a heart attack or during recovery, right? 
can occur after a heart attack. In other words, when the person's plumbing system, you know, is, um, has problems, cardiac arrest can take place also. Can you see? But when cardiac arrest takes place, heart attack does not take place. It is cardiac arrest. It is just, it has happened suddenly, no electricity. But when the electricity goes off, imagine when you don't have light for a long period of time, especially for those in Nigeria, okay? When Nepal does not bring lights, right? For a long time, what happens? No light to pump water, right? Water leaves the house. Can you see it? So um, um, heart attack, you understand it's you know that way okay so heart attack increases the risk of sudden what cardiac arrest right okay i hope i got that analogy properly yeah so most heart attacks do not lead to sudden cardiac arrest okay but when sudden cardiac arrest occurs heart attack is a common cause Okay, so other heart conditions may also disrupt the heart rhythm and lead to sudden cardiac arrest. This includes a thickened heart muscle. Okay, so when the heart muscle is thickened as a result of stress and some other things, you could have that challenge, you know, large hearts and some other problems. Okay, now let's distinguish between the two of them again. So I just did this so that we can have a better picture in case my descriptions don't, you know, give us an excellent work, right? So when it comes to heart attack, what are the causes of a heart attack? Arteries to, arteries to heart muscles are blocked by plaques and clots, preventing blood flowing to the heart. When it comes to cardiac arrest, electrical signals to the heart malfunction, heart doesn't beat properly, stops the flowing of, it stops the flow of blood to vital organs, okay? Now, what are the symptoms of heart attack? Common symptoms include shortness of breath, chest discomfort, tightness, and nausea. When it comes to cardiac arrest, no warning. The first sign of, of the problem is passing out and becoming unconscious. In other words, the person cannot help himself here when it comes to cardiac arrest. But here, the person has the opportunity of saving himself. So when you start feeling this discomfort, you quickly pick up your phone, call a friend, or call your doctor, or call your hospital, or the emergency service to rescue you. But when it comes to this, if you don't have anybody around to help, the person goes unconscious until intervention comes or could just die from that particular point. Now, what happens? Heart continues beating, but muscles may slowly die from lack of what? Oxygen. Now, heart rhythm is interrupted or stops pumping blood around the body. Casualty stops um, breathing and becomes what? Unconscious, straight up unconsciousness. Okay. Time frame can be slow to progress through symptoms over hours or even days. Now, seconds to become unconscious. We're not talking about minutes now. Death within minutes if no treatment is what given. That's for cardiac arrest. Now, what do you need to do? For a heart attack, you need to call an ambulance, okay? Call the emergency service and be prepared to do a CPR, okay? If they become unconscious or they, when they stop breathing, then because most times some people don't stop breathing when they have a have the heart attack. But for the people with cardiac arrest, they stop breathing, okay? So you need to do a CPR, okay? You need to do cardiopulmonary resuscitation and you need to use a defibrillator to shock the heart, to bring the heart back so, you know, restore that electric signal back, okay? So what do you need to do? When it has to do with a heart attack, you need to call your hospital. For those of us in Nigeria, we don't have 911. For those of you outside the country, hooray, call 911. For those of us in Nigeria, if you know the ambulance service or the emergency service, you can call. Or if you use private hospitals and you have their quick dial number, you quickly dial. Put it on your redial, your speed dial. As well, if you know someone around you that, you know, has risk factors or has had a heart attack in the past, that number should be on the redial list so that emergency services can come in and intervene, okay? And most of the time when the a staff is, when um, the ambulance comes in, the staff member that is good with heart issues can, you know, take care of the patient while, it, while before the ambulance comes or while the ambulance is in motion to the hospital. While for cardiac arrest, you need to do CPR immediately. You need to help the heart to pump blood. You need to help the heart. You need to, you know, you need to go in there. Just 
help the heart. So you need to just go in there to give compressions so that the blood can go in and out to keep the muscles, to keep the organs alive until intervention comes. Now, if two people are within the house, one person should be making the phone calls, one person should what, you know, help to keep the heart pumping before, you know, intervention comes or else it could lead to death. Now, how do we carry out CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation? Okay, it's very simple. Number one indicator, especially when it comes to cardiac arrest, is that the person is un unconscious because it happens fast, right? So you need to shake the person. When the person is unconscious, you need to shake the person and shout to find out if the person can still speak. Some people that have heart attack that's actually leading to unconscious, they could. Most of them are like, I can't breathe properly. They could still talk to you. So in that case, you need to shout. If the person can hear you, person like, I'm having chest pains. I can't breathe. Then you know what's happening. So you need to shake and shout to find out the state of the person. If the person is still conscious or unconscious. Now, if the person is unconscious, call for help. Call for help. Then ensure you check for breathing. Check the person's pulse. Check if the person is still breathing. If the person is not breathing, you need to place your hands on the person's chest. You can see the way I did my hands on the person's chest, at the center of the chest. And that's why I emphasized where your heart is located, in the middle of your chest, okay? You place your hands at the center of the chest of the person and you push hard and what? Fast about two times, as in twice per second. Ha, ha, ha. You need to go fast so that the heart can pump and send oxygen to the brain and to some other parts, pending when, you know, um, intervention comes. Now, if you have had trainings, for those of us that, you know, had Red Cross training back then in NYC and when we're in school, you know, you get to know how to give rescue breaths when you breathe when you help the person breathe by, you know, breathing into the person. But, you know, due to COVID-19 and some other things, it's not something that you should just do like that because you don't know the situation of the person, okay? So the breaths, you can leave that out, but you, that's if you don't have training on how to do it, okay? But if you, if you are just a novice, just ensure your two hands are this way. Just ensure you just keep giving that person at least 30 chest pushes, okay? Repeated cycles of 30 chest pushes to ensure that blood is moving little by little until intervention comes. I'm repeating this because it's very important. A lot of, especially in Nigeria, a lot of people have died as a result of the fact that people were like, hey, now so the guy just die like that, oh. The guy don't fall like this. The guy don't just, they breathe. He not just, they breathe. As we, they talk, so the bobo don't just go. <laughs> Instead of doing the needful, you see that time people are using to narrate and bring out their phones to video and do all that, you could save a life. A lot of people have died because you see, all the people around were ignorant of this stuff I just talked about. A lot of people have died. All they had to do was just give compressions to keep the heart pumping manually until intervention came. But because the person was unconscious and they felt the person was not breathing, they felt the person had died and a lot of people just died that way. Do you know that in some countries they have this um, stuff that can help give the heart shocks in public places? Public places, you just go there, if it's available, you pick it up and put the stuff on the chest and begin to listen to the automated responses as you give manual pushes. Well, you know, I'm not gonna I, I'm not gonna say too much. You know how we are in Ninja is well, it's well with us, okay? So as a long reacher, what do you do to ensure that you don't find yourself in that situation? Feed your heart with the right things. Feed your heart with the right things. Because of time, I can't really go in depth, but I'm just gonna just quickly go into our product here. Take your berry oil. Your berry oil is excellent for what? heart health next week we're going to be talking about berry oil exhaustively and how it can help your heart because you see the contents of berry oil actually help to take care of a lot of challenges that surrounds the heart so next week please tell everyone 
to ensure they are available because we're going to be talking about berry oil in a different light. You're going to understand why you need berry oil in your house 247 because you see, it takes care of you. I'm going to start here. It protects what the heart. Berry, and I'm not just talking about any type of berry oil, please. I'm talking about our long reach sea buckton berry oil. So if you're a first time on this call and you're not familiar with our products, our sea buckton berry oil is different from every other type of berry oil. Okay, this one is a four in one. Okay, it's loaded with everything you need. And that is why we have people with sickle cell living a, a, a good life because of berry oil. We have testimonies of people that have sickled blood cells living free of crisis as a result of the use of our berry oil. Because do you know what it does for you? It helps to take care of your heart. It helps to take care of your kidney, helps to take care of your liver. It helps prevent your blood platelets from clumping. It helps to prevent all those challenges that affect your blood cells. It gives the nourishment that your blood cells require to, you know, to stay well. It helps to reduce the risk factor of developing blood cancers. And you know, when you can prevent that, trust me, every other thing is fine in your body, okay? It helps to protect your body against toxins, okay? It's, you can see it contains omega-3, 6, 7. We talked about LDL, right? LDL, the high density LDL, the low density um, um, LDL. And we said earlier on in this, earlier on while I was training, that good cholesterol helps to clear out what bad cholesterol. And our sea berry oil is the only berry oil in the market that has omega-3, omega-6, omega-7 and omega-9 fatty acids that can help take out bad cholesterol from your system. Now, aside this, we're also gonna talk about the micronutrients it contains. I'm not gonna to say too much because next week, ensure you make it on this call, we're gonna exhaustively talk about berry oil. Exhaustively, I'm gonna do an excellent job talking about berry oil. I know I've talked about berry oil in the past, but this time you're gonna see it in a different light when it comes to heart health. And you're going to see why we have testimonies from people with sickle cell anemia, okay? Coming back like, I have been on berry oil and I don't have crisis anymore. I don't go back to the hospital. You will see it here. You see it here. The reasons why, okay? Now, alibao is excellent. It's specially meant for men, okay? And women have the mangine also, okay? Especially meant for women. These form formulations help to provide you with nutritional requirements that will enable your body function well. Okay, don't forget that nutrients are required. Your brain needs nutrients. See, when your brain is, um, is deprived of nutrients, you bring, your brain cells begin to die. They begin to die. Not this one, we, if, you, if you starve your brain all right, of the right nutrients that it requires, you find that you will not function well. You start forgetting things easily. So, and don't forget that in case of cardiac arrest, when a person goes unconscious, the person has no recollection of anything that's happening. Do you know why the person doesn't have recollection? Because the person has lost brain cells. As in, the brain is dying per, per second. So you can see that it's important that you give your, your brain, your body, the right nutrients it needs for your body to flourish properly. And I used to say this in trainings, your body has a mechanism of select, like of favorism, I must say. It gives the most important organs requirements first before supplying the others. Now imagine a man that does not feed himself well. How would he reproduce well? Don't forget that when your nutritional level is low, I, your body will channel the little resources you can get to the most important organ, your brain, your heart they will take better portions of it. Then it will deprive, as in the other reproductive organ, it will deprive them of nutrients. And you find out that the more deprived those organs are, the less functional they are. But because they are not major players, you will not know. You'll be like, eh, I just they feel like this. I just they tire. So I'm gonna be speaking pigeon so that it will enter into our blood very well. My pigeon is improving, you know. 
Yeah. So guys, it's important you feed your, your body system. And that's why a lot of people, their reproductive system is not functioning well because too much deprivation of you know stuff. They can't they, one <laughs> 10 minutes, <laughs> four minutes man, or 10 minutes stuff. Not enough resources. So you can't go. Where's the power? Where's the energy? You find that you're getting tired easily, can't even sleep well. Everything you just have. This is what you need, okay? This is what you need. A long reach pie cup. We talked about pie cup last month. So I'm not going to spend time. Time is fast spent, okay? On this. But you know what it does? It converts your acidic water to alkaline water. And don't forget that alkaline water um, is good for your body. And water from our pie cup has high oxygen potentials. So it helps to, pro, um, to ensure that your circulatory system functions well. And one thing you need to know is this. When you drink water consistently from the Long Reach Pie Cup, it helps to take out those plaques that clog your, your coronary arteries. Can you see that? Yeah. When you take water consistently from your pie cup, it will clear out those fats, those cholesterol buildup, those plaques from your, 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 your arteries. And you find out that you begin to breathe well. That's why we have people that complain of heart problems. After taking water from the pie cup, they, you know, testified of, you know, feeling relief, reduced chest pains and all that. That's why a person with sinusitis, asthma, and the rest of them, when they take water from the cup, they feel better. They feel better. Okay? So I'm going to move on now. And if you V pink for slim people, and if you V blue, sorry, for fat people, for people on the big side, so if you have people that are obese and they're trying to ensure that they have good heart health, this is for you, okay? You should be pink. Take it to help clear out, you know, those excess, you know, um, the low, um, the low density lipoproteins, okay? You take them out and replace them with high density, okay? And it helps you ensure that you have good bowel um, functions. It will help to ensure that your weight is properly managed. You find out that your metabolism is increased to ensure that you burn out those, you know, fats from your system in a healthy way. Now, our products keep you healthy. They're not the ones that will just drain you and you feel like you start feeling weak and, you know, and, 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 um, and anorexic, okay? These ones will take care of you and you will not even know that you're losing weight because you'll find out that you're not fitting into your clothes normally, okay? Now, this is for people that are slim, and people that need more nutrition, you know, for their body system, you can see here it helps to lower blood pressure for hypertensive patients. It gives you, um, it helps to, you know, prevent heart disease. You can see here, right? It's rich in antioxidants. Antioxidants are excellent for your heart health, okay? And for your body system to function well, okay? So you need that too. And don't forget that every product on the platform has what we call PVs, right? It has PVs and PV is equal to money as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Now, every time you purchase products on Long Reach platform, you have the opportunity of gaining membership into the system so that you can, I tell people, when you become a member on the platform, you begin to enjoy company price. You won't buy at retail price from members. You begin to buy at our company price. The only access to company price is when you get registered, okay? And when you get registered, you can come in through any of these entry levels. Okay, I'm gonna start from the bottom to the top. Now, the startup pack has contains um, a default set of um, products that you will purchase at the rate of 14,000 Naira. And you're gonna get, you're gonna get four PVs, okay? At the end of the day, okay, you're gonna get four PVs. Now, and when you get four PVs, you're registered, you're gonna be given a code that can enable you to start your business. Now, the next level is called the Q Silver level. At the Q Silver level, you are required to generate 60 PVs. Okay, 60 PVs. You have to get 60 PVs. When you get your 60 PVs, this 60 PV will qualify you to be a Q Silver member estimated at 45,000. Now, the next level is silver at 120 PVs estimated at 90,000. Gold level is the next at 240 PVs, estimated at 180,000. The next is platinum, 720 PVs, estimated at 500,000. And VIP, 
with um, P with 1,680 PBs estimated at 1.2 million. So wherever you are financially, Longreach has a package for you. So money is not an excuse for you to come on the platform. Money is not an excuse for you to enjoy a beautiful and a healthy lifestyle. I tell people <laughs> that you, you cannot, 14,000 cannot give you good health outside. When you're sick, go to the hospitals. Hospital bill of 14,000. You can't even use 14,000 to pay for malaria treatment here in Nigeria. So when we tell you to come on the platform with as low as 14,000, we know what we're saying. We're saying, no matter where you are, come and build. You could start at the starter combo um, level and grow through the entry levels. From starter combo, you build your PVs to 60 PVs. From 60 PV, you build to 120, from 120 to 240, from 240 to 720, from 7 to 1680. At this point, entry level, you know, upgrade ends. Okay, and guess what? You become a partner. You become a stakeholder with Longreach and you begin to enjoy 1% global sales. And your commission will be 12% weekly when it comes to performance bonus and other bonuses and um, development, um, um, sorry, performance bonus, I mean. Okay, and other bonus are attached, of which I'm gonna talk about late, um, later. Okay, so what are the requirements if you want to do the business? Maximum of three legs. You need to bring in three partners to do business with you. Okay, nobody's pressuring you on your on the type of products to buy. You select your products by yourself. You grow at your own pace. You become a leader at your own capacity without anybody telling you what to do. You know what to do on your own. Okay, no mandatory monthly purchase. You, all you just need to do is to do your major maintenance and that's all. When you do your maintenance, you're good to go. Okay, you do your maintenance, you're good to go. Okay, and there's unlimited accumulation of bonus points. Nobody's coming to say, oh, you've acquired 1 million points. So we're going to clear the 1 million, then you start afresh. No, you continue, your points continue to pile up as you move um, up. Now, this has 10 ways for you to earn in long reach. Beautiful ways. We have bonuses. We have funds that you can enjoy. Scholarship funds, housing funds, car funds, travel funds. If you've not left Nigeria before, you want to travel out, you can actualize that dream. We have bonuses you get on the weekly. We have um, leadership bonuses you can get also on the monthly. All these things are available to you on this platform. And you can grow to become a star director. The goal for every long richer is five stars. Right, to so become a star director because you see, at this point, you are already in short. From this point, you're already experiencing financial freedom. Okay, but all it takes is for you to make up your mind and build your business. Okay, so my call to action, in order for us not to spend time, is for you to switch your brand. If you're first time on this call, switch your brand. If you're a long richer and you're still using other brands switch your brand again okay language products are excellent i have seen i've been on the field trust me people the confidence i use i, I, I use in telling people about the products is not going down do you know why every day i get mind-blowing testimonies i get calls from people that have consulted with me hey dockers do you know this has happened i'm like wow i'm like wow they are mind-blowing testimonies do you know how it feels to have freedom to manage your health on your own terms without having to do emergency or high BP kind of treatments? You know how it feels like when you live every day and you tell yourself, oh God, for the past three years, I have not treated malaria. I tell people since 2017, I have not had any cause of treating malaria. And I'm not joking. I am in Nigeria. I have my AA, my general type, AA. You're shocked, right? Since 2017, I've not gone to the, and I don't do, I, I tell people I don't do self-medication. No, I don't go to the pharmacy to buy stuff. No, I go to the hospital. I get inject, I get injected for it. And remember I'm injected. I know that I've taken my dose for that time. I have not had that experience. In short, I don't think my family doctor, or I don't think he's gonna recognize my face now because it's been a long time. So you can live that way also by taking your health into your hands. 
Don't end up having high blood pressure. Don't end up having cardiac arrest. Don't end up having heart attack. Because you see, with simple products, you can actually live a healthy and a beautiful lifestyle as you hustle and bustle. Everyone in Nigeria right now is hustling. Yes, the hustle is serious, okay? Because of the inflation and everything. Don't kill yourself trying to make a living. Ensure you have what it takes as you are making your livelihood, you are building yourself up. You're taking good care of yourself. And don't forget, language gives you money, okay? So be a product user. Your personal testimonies are the greatest motivation you need, okay? And don't forget that when you share your testimonies, you could just save someone that has been bottling up his or her own problems, okay? Don't keep quiet because a closed mouth is a closed destiny. You close your mouth, you don't make money. In long reach, you make retail profits, we make PVs, we make um, commissions, weekly commissions, we get funds and a whole lot of things, okay? So with long reach, it's a better life and a better future. My, you know, my parting words, good health is the most important thing. I need to, I need to sound it. Good health is the most important thing, though. It's more important than success, more than money, more than power. Remember, cardiac arrest and heart attack in the past, used to be the disease of the rich because they hustle for too much money. Now, it's no more the disease of the rich. It's the disease of for everyone right now. So take caution, okay? As you chase success, as you chase money, take care of your heart, take care of your health because good health is the most important thing, okay? It's more important than power. So at this point, I say thank you for making it a date with me on this call. I hope you got value from everything we talked about. Thank you.